Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A wet start to the weekend with the local forecasters tracking more showers ahead. It was an ugly scene last weekend in Greektown. Tonight, Detroit police making sure it doesn't happen again. But we begin with deputies jumping into action to free an unconscious mother trapped beneath a car. There was no time to wait, so deputies worked together to lift that car and rush that young mother to the hospital. Fortunately, her two-year-old son was in a car seat and escaped without injuries. Our Mara McDonald live in Pontiac tonight. And Mara, the man who caused this wreck just took off? Uh, Jace, he did take off and he had to work at it to take off too because he wrecked his own SUV in the process of all this. So he gets himself out of his wrecked SUV, takes off running, leaving that woman and her child trapped. This is where it starts, that silver SUV driving too fast behind the wheel. Police say is this man, Dontonio Tremone Nichols, who sees the deputy and then really picks up speed. Seconds later, he runs the stop sign and smashes into the Pontiac G6 with a 24-year-old woman behind the wheel and her two-year-old in a car seat. The woman had been ejected from the vehicle. She was trapped under the vehicle with only part of her leg sticking out and she was unconscious. Nichols crawls out of his smashed SUV and takes off running, leaving that mother and her two-year-old child who was dangling in his car seat upside down. The first deputy there obviously knew he had to call for a lot of help. Thankfully, uh, deputies got there very quickly and realized they couldn't wait for any kind of mechanical assistance and just assembled as many people as they could to lift the car to be able to extract her. She remains in intensive care in critical condition. Deputies got her two-year-old out who was still restrained in his car seat. Unfortunately, she didn't have her seatbelt on. It turns out Nichols is a parole absconder with convictions going back to 2008, including home invasion, fleeing police, and cocaine charges. He knew it was a traumatic crash and didn't care what happened to whoever he hit. Back here live, as a matter of fact, when sheriff's deputies were out there, neighbors, you know, told the deputies, we saw him running and we asked him, is everybody okay over there? And his answer was, I don't know, and just kept on moving. We're live in Pontiac tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Wow, traumatic crash just does not do that video justice. Just amazing and glad that they were okay. Mara, all right, thanks. Well, it, uh, it turned out to be a wet night across Metro Detroit here. <laughs> yeah, Brandon Rue in for Ben tonight. Actually, a little rain delay in the Tigers game, and, and yeah. they got back going now, Brandon. <laughs> and that were, you know, one of the areas that didn't see one of the heavier showers. So we got just minor delays, but we look live out at Belle Isle, which will be the scene for the Grand Prix. And there are some concerns for Saturday, but let's get going here tonight. Upper 60s and low 70s. The rain is starting to fade, so you can see some of these showers even closer to downtown really fading out. The heavier stuff that we see right now, Jackson down to Adrian, and that is about it. So we'll say rain wanes. Fog develops again through the morning in the usual spots. 68 degrees for a low, and then tomorrow we're going to bubble up again, middle, upper 80s through the mid-afternoon. And I think after 3 p.m., we need to be careful. Eyes to the skies for scattered rain and thunder showers that are coming our way. Again, right now, things are looking all right, but we will track those Saturday showers and storms, guys, and also track the end of the mugginess. Okay, Brandon, thank you. This was a scene last weekend in Greektown with officers being pushed and shoved as they try to break up a massive brawl right on Monroe Street. This week, the city rolled out a plan to stop the violence. Larry Spruill is in Greektown, and Larry, the extra security is being noticed. There are definitely more police officers out here Friday night in Greektown. Take a look just right across the street. You can see them standing on the corner and even in their cars over there. Now, it's all about creating a safe place for people to have fun without the violence like previous weekends. Take a listen. Greektown packed Friday night with people wanting to have some weekend fun, but also among the crowd, more officers riding and walking around. Even members of Detroit 300 in Greektown Friday. Brittany Rogers says she thinks the extra security 
is necessary. I hear on the news so much on how many people are getting in fights and shootings. The plan is called Greek Town Crackdown. Both the city and Detroit police say it's to stop the violence. Besides more officers, there's a zero tolerance policy for any type of illegal activity in Greek Town. Also, streets are being shut down to control the crowd flow. All of this is because of the large fights that happened multiple weekends in a row. Kayla Tutt was here last weekend when one of the fights broke out. It was a mess. It started from just a man who was just drunk in the bar. He got kicked out and then I think he just approached somebody who was just sitting eating his food and it turned into like a whole like ordeal. Melanie Markowitz with the Greektown Neighborhood Partnership says the new safety plan is needed. Our, our neighborhood, the Greektown neighborhood, is in full support of the Detroit Police Department's five-point crowd management plan. Uh, and we were happy to uh, partner with them to, to work on all of the kind of challenges we're seeing in our downtown and across the city. But will the plan work? Do people feel safe? Yeah, I feel safe. Everything is, is, is yes, I, I love the city. Yeah, I feel good. Also, if anyone is caught doing something wrong, the Detroit police say they have the option of seizing those cars as well. Reporting in Greektown, Larry Sproul, Local 4. Okay, Larry, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine suffers another setback. The FDA has told J&J &J to discard 60 million doses over possible contamination. They were made at the Baltimore plant that didn't meet quality standards. You may remember back in March we reported that two batches of the vaccine from that plant were approved. They're the first doses from that facility to pass inspection. Meanwhile, Michigan reports 318 cases and eight additional deaths today. A man has been charged after dragging a Wyandotte police officer during a chase. Watch this. Just more incredible video. Police say after the officer fell, the man kept driving and crashed into a house. He then ran from the car and another officer followed him to make the arrest. Dartagnan Stackhouse is charged with assault with intent to murder, fleeing from police, resisting, and more. He's being held without bond. Police are looking for four men in connection to a deadly shooting on Detroit's west side. This was last night on Calvert near the lodge. A 51-year-old man was killed. A six-year-old boy was shot in the foot, and two other men were also injured. All three were taken to the hospital and were stable. Police tell us the shooters were driving in this black Infinity SUV Four men were inside, but investigators believe only two were firing shots. A law that enabled Governor Whitmer to issue emergency powers early in the pandemic will soon be repealed. Today, the Michigan Supreme Court ordered the Board of Canvassers to certify a petition from Unlock Michigan that would let legislators repeal the law. The 1945 Emergency Powers of Governor Act allowed Governor Whitmer to issue orders without seeking legislative approval. The ruling comes after two Democrats on the board refused to certify the measure back in April. The Detroit Grand Prix is back on Belle Isle after taking last year off due to the pandemic. Today's free pre-day sold out with about 8,500 fans enjoying. Getting an up-close look at the qualifying races. If you don't have anything planned this weekend, there are still tickets available for tomorrow and Sunday. And if you can't make it down to Belle Isle, we have live coverage from the Grand Prix all weekend. We'll rev up ours starting tomorrow right here on Local 4 at 2 p.m. Still ahead, it was part of a local community for more than 150 years until being destroyed. What investigators now believe caused this fire at this historic barn. Amid all the nerves for people heading back into the office, what about the people who've been there the entire time? We talked to some and how they feel about the big return to work might surprise you. But first, a Detroit family says a group of gunmen keep targeting their house. It sounded like like a bomb, like bombs, like the house was tumbling down. A grandmother lives there and has no idea why her home was shot up, what she's doing now to be safe. That's next.